Namaste, everyone. This is our yen flow for this week, and it's going to be a little bit of both. Um, we have a couple flows that I have planned, but I love steeping in the yen position. So if you want to uh, do more yen, you don't even have to do the flows. Or if you want to skip a vinyasa, because two of those are going to be vinyasas, you can take downward facing dog or child's pose. Child's pose is actually going to be the first position we start with today because I have something to read to you. Uh, yesterday, I had a long conversation with um, my friend that you probably know, Kimberly Rose. Her mother, unfortunately, passed away uh, two nights ago. And so we just talked on the phone for a good bit yesterday. And um, she was sharing with me this reading. Uh, well, she was telling me about this reading and she said she would send it to me and she sent it to me this morning. And I thought it was perfect for our yoga practice today. So let's start off in child's pose. You can do the extended form with the arms in front. You can do the traditional one with the arms wrapped around the body, which is probably the one that I'm going to demonstrate. So let's meet on the mat. So when you take your child's pose, check in, especially with your ankles and knees. You may find that using props is more helpful. And if this isn't good for your body and the props maybe aren't helpful, you can always spread out on your belly and crocodile and place your head down to your arms. So know that that's also a good alternative and I wanted you to be face down because those two poses are a way to really go inward and to be introspective. And in this reading that I'm gonna share with you, I may have mentioned it's by Dr. Wayne Dyer. This is a gentleman who was really big in the spiritual community. He was a national best-selling author. He wrote tons of books. He was a fantastic public speaker. And he was part of the wave of the self-help movement. So nowadays, when you go into a bookstore, you know, you'll have a self-help section. And I guarantee you could find some of his books and writings there. This is entitled Conversation in the Womb, A Parable of Life After Delivery. So in your child's pose, think about how this mimics the fetal position as if you were back in your mother's womb. In a mother's womb where there's actually two babies or a set of twins, one of the babies asks the other, do you believe in life after delivery? And the other replied, why, of course. There has to be something after delivery. Maybe we are here to prepare ourselves for what we will be later. Nonsense, says the first one. There is no life after delivery. What kind of life would that be? And the second one said, I don't know, but there will be more light than here. Maybe we will walk with our legs and perhaps eat from our mouths. Maybe we will have other senses that we can't even understand right now. And the first one said, well, that's absurd. Walking's impossible. And eating with our mouths, that's ridiculous. The umbilical cord supplies all the nutrition we need. But the umbilical cord is so short. Life after delivery is not logically excluded. The second insisted, well, I think there is something, and maybe it's different than here. Maybe we won't need this physical cord anymore. The first replied, well, that's nonsense, and moreover, 
If there is life, then why has no one ever come back from there? Delivery has to be the end of life. And in the after delivery, there's nothing but darkness, silence, and oblivion. It takes us nowhere. I don't know, said the second one, but certainly we'll meet her mother. After all, she's going to take care of us. And then the first one came back to say, Mother, you actually believe there's a mother? That's so laughable. If mother exists, where is she? Why can't we see her now? And the second baby said, well, she's all around us. We're surrounded by her. We are her. It is in her that we live. And without her, this world would not and could not even exist. The first one said, well, I don't see her. So she doesn't exist. To which the second replied, sometimes when you're in silence and you focus really hard and listen, you can perceive her presence. You can hear her loving voice calling down from above. Anyway, Kimberly shared that with me yesterday, and I thought it was so beautiful because the other day we were talking about, in science, light only reveals 1%, 1% of what actually exists. Our senses only take in 1%, and there's so much more out there. So let's continue to open up our deep diaphragmatic breaths. This pose, it may make you feel a little cocooned, a little withdrawn, but yet safe, nurtured, and held. If you're in crocodile with the legs spread out, bring your hands underneath your shoulders, rock up to tabletop. If you're in child's pose, stretch out your arms, lift your face, and then rock up to hands and knees. Because the arms were stretched out, you may have to travel your hands back just a bit for alignment's sake. We're going to strengthen and stretch the wrist. So as you inhale, rock forward, shoulders just past the hands towards the fingertips. And then exhale, rock the shoulders away from the wrist. Inhale, rocking forward and beyond. Exhale, gently swaying back. Do that a couple more times. Then we're going to do a deeper stretch for the hands and carpal tunnel area by circling the hands around to face our bodies. Just do the best you can because I know that's a lot. Staying stacked with precision at first. And then just like before, instead of rocking forward though, we're going to gently lean the hips back. Making a deeper angle, a deeper stretch. If you grimace or groan, you may be doing too much, so back away. Now let's turn the hands back around. Step them one space up from the shoulders, curl the toes under, and then pop up like a tent. Downward Facing Dog. So in Downward Facing Dog, push it to the mound of the hands, the fleshy part, close to the base knuckles. Lengthen back through your arms, through your vertebrae. Press down through the balls of the feet and see if you can get your six bones as high as possible. Stay lifted. 
Keep breathing. And on your next out breath, slowly sink, sink, sink your heels towards the ground. Even if they don't touch, keep pressing down, opening up your calves and Achilles tendons. There's a big trend right now at New Moon. So many people are getting into pickleball, and I know they're having so much fun with that. But one of my clients with Reiki is an emergency doctor. And she mentioned to me the other day that so many older people that are getting into pickleball are blowing out their Achilles tendons and ankles and showing up at the hospital. So if you get into pickleball, please be careful. Walk your feet forward towards the top of the mat. Put a nice bend in your knees and let your arms drape down. Let your head flop. So the upper body's hanging like a rag doll, but you can bring a little nod or bobble to the head. Holding ourselves in half. Since we're doing a yin pose, I encourage you to close your eyes. In fact, let's hold the last bit of the pose with our arms crossed, unless that's too much. Gape in your mouth or between your lips. That will help to relax your face, and your jaw. Experiment with your breath and try to extend your exhalations out much longer than the count of your inhalation. Now that we've been holding this in position, we're going to take it into a little flow. So ground your hands as you step back to plank. Streamline and stretch out long through your body. Rock forward with your feet. Drop down and hover above the floor. And then inhale, lift to upward facing dog. As you exhale, roll it back to downward facing dog. Swim up the space between the big toes and uplift your left leg as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, take downward scorpion. Being careful with how much you turn because you want to honor that inner thigh on the standing leg. On your next out breath, unroll the hips, slip that shin just behind your hands. If you need deer pose, take deer pose. Otherwise, we're gonna take sleeping swan. So you can glide your right leg back and slowly walk it down. So you can be on forearms or you can spill down lower. We're gonna flush out this left hip. And since we're opening up this class with child's pose and having that little reading about babies being in the womb, I'm going to talk about my baby a little bit. So you guys have been with me for a while. And you know that I've never really complained about my hip until the last six to eight months, maybe. 
And when I first started developing some issues in my left hip, it started when I found out my son had his first girlfriend. And it's my left hip, which is the feminine side. And knowing that life shows up in the body, I wanted to blame that situation. I thought I was holding her energy <laughs> in my hip. So I've worked with it. I've worked through it. I really adore her. It's not her. I realize it's me. I'm the female, right? I'm the female entity that's having an issue here. And that's why it's showing up in my hip because that's also our family or more intimate relations. So I was feeling good last week. I wasn't feeling much in my hip. And then this week, he announces to me that he's going to create an appointment at the school office just to see if there's any way he could graduate early. And ever since he told me that, ah, my left hip seized up again. So I want you to realize what I'm realizing. Because the lesson for the second chakra is letting go. And it's hard to let go of things sometimes. It's hard to let go of control. It's hard to let go of your children when they're going through new phases and becoming their own person. So just observe what, or if anything, holding here in this area of the body. This is also a pose. You can close your eyes and create those longer out breaths for that aspect of letting go. Letting go of the muscles, giving into gravity. Part of this, I know, is due to his girlfriend going off to college. And I could tell he was a little bothered yesterday. So I shared with him a statement. I said, you know, you need to treat your relationship like a delicate butterfly. If you grip too hard, if you hold too tight, you could crush its spirit. You could crush its wings and ability to fly. But if you open up your hand and let it sit softly and have the freedom to go, it may actually come back in return to sit on your hand or shoulder. That's something I heard years ago. And it's something that I think about often when I'm dealing with something relational. Are we holding on too tight? Or can we allow them the freedom to fly, to be free? All right, on the next inhale, let's start to exit out. And you're going to lean onto that left hip, okay? And if you're in deer, you already are. Uh, but bring that right leg around in front of you. And we're going to scoop underneath the leg. And we're going to carry it over to the other side. Now, if you need to be active to protect your back, you'll flex the ankle and you'll have a straight spine. 
you have a healthy back, let your knee and foot be soft. Allow your arms to lift overhead. And then as you exhale, you're gonna rain down. Palms open beside you, head bowing. And as your head bows, slightly lean it to the left, slightly lean it over to the right. And wherever you feel a particular tense area or a little steam maybe in your upper back, pause there. Remember again, it's supposed to be sloth-like. It appears a little lazy, even though it's not. It requires some patience. Some stillness. Notice at the end when we close the eyes, it's not only to be introspective, it is if we were back in the room, right? It's dark. When you're doing more active yoga, the eyes are peeled open and therefore more light. So I've always loved comparing the yin practice with being more like being in the womb. So on your next deep breath, let's turn the palms down, pull the navel in, and then furl the back. And then once you come up, we're going to slide the right foot in and the left foot on top of the right knee. So it's like a double pigeon or fire law. If that hurts or is too awkward, put the foot forward of the right knee. We're going into the hippie twist. So left hand can go to the arch of the foot or to the outer knee, and you're sweeping the right arm back behind you. There's also another variation, if you want to explore, sliding the elbow down to the knee or crook of the foot, and then pulling the heart up towards your thumbs, gazing over the right shoulder. Wind from the twist, separate the hand, or the feet, <laughs> separate your feet and come up to a malasana squat. Of course, you can sit on a block to make it restorative. You can bow your head to prayer hands to make it yin. If you need it to be active, push the elbows into the inner thighs and lift your heart higher. If you need another alternative, you can do bear pose, feet parallel, elbows stacked, or horse squat, which is higher like this.
Count three more breaths. When we come out, the hands are going to spill down to blocks or floor. You'll heel, toe, the feet more together. Except this time we're going to be active by rooting the feet, straightening the legs, belly hugging, Uttanasana. Inhale, slide your hands up the leg bones, reach out. And then exhale, spill back down, Uttanasana. Firming nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. Continue to press, pressurize the feet. Inhale, sweep the arms to your sides and up overhead. Coming to Urdhva Hasasana, arms framing the face. Exhale, hands together and close right back in Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, release. Going back into a flow. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower down. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Look at the distance between the big toes. Make sure it's not extremely wide because now we're lifting the right leg up. And exhale, take downward scorpion. Exhale, unwind. Bring that shin to the front of the mat. And slide your left leg back behind for swan or bend and pull that knee forward for deer. Okay, either one. And then you're walking it out and down. Blending your edge and where you want to be today based on your experience in the now. So in Yen, I mentioned it's womb-like because we close the eyes but it's also where we want to feel heavy and so i know you probably have heard on the news that burning man got rained out and flooded out pretty severely and there was all of these, you know, poor people like stuck in the mud. They couldn't escape. And they were saying that all the mud and the shoes and the tents was wearing everything down and hard to get away from. So even though we're not at Burning Man, I want you to imagine like you're kind of stuck in the mud here. And allow yourself to drop heavier and heavier. Bring your awareness gauge between the two sides. Noticing what you're storing within this hip. The hips that are often considered the holding tanks in the body.
couple of those exhalations to help you to surrender more deeply into the pose. Slow wrist arts, arts set up. We'll lean onto that right hip. We'll bring the left leg out in front. And then we'll pull or lift rather that right leg up and send it across the straight leg for half shoelace. And then again, active, you'll have the muscles engaged, flat back. And if you can do the yen, arms lifting, and then raining and pouring over your lap. And then once your head drops, this is where you can explore again, leaning the head to one shoulder, then to the other. So find where you need a little bit more attention. down, unfurl the back, slide your left foot in and your right foot to the top of the left knee or pop that right foot over so you have the triangle still at your lap and just for a demonstration this is like a lot of gap here it doesn't hurt so sometimes if it looks or feels awkward but doesn't hurt Maybe you should stay because when you press down through your hands, you'll find that your spine uplifts and that gap closes somewhat. All right, the right hand, hippie twist, is going to cross over to the arch of the foot or to the knee as you sweep the left arm back behind you. Also, you have the option to sink down to push the elbow as leverage, to dial the heart more towards your thumbs. Slowly exit out of that twist. Now, we're not gonna come into the squat like we did before. We're actually gonna lift the right knee, slide the left knee to be at the center of your mat, and the right foot really can be on the inside or you could hook it to the other side. But we wanna stand the knee up, hug it in with the left arm, lift up energetically, and take the right hand behind us and twist. So while we're here in this final twist, Arda Vatsi and Drasa, close your eyes. Consider for a moment places and pockets in the world that may be having peaceful protests, 
that may be dealing with climate changes, environmental changes, and hardships. Send it to the oceans that are needing to be cleaned up. Send it towards places that are dealing with famine. I radiate my love, goodwill, and compassion to soul friends everywhere. I radiate my love, goodwill, compassion, the soul friends everywhere. Remove your back hand, unwind from that twist. Sometimes it's fun just to lean into the hands and do a little switcheroo. If that doesn't work for your body, just come out, enter back in. The right knee faces the center of the mat. Left foot can stand on the inside or outside. But then stand the knee up. Lift through the top of the head, hug it in with the right arm, left hand to the floor behind your back. Radiate my love, goodwill, compassion to soul friends everywhere. And you exhale, unwind from that twist. Unhook your legs and we're going to roll down to our backs and we're going to catch the shins or feet for happy baby pose. Now, if you take a hold of your feet, your hands can wrap to the arches of the feet and then you can push down. You can grip the pinky toe side of the foot and pull down or you can lace the first two fingers around each big toe and gently tug. But try to keep your back against the ground, your sacrum lowering and firmly planted on the floor. Okay, we're going to relieve the feet and plant them down. And please know that you don't have to uh, hook or cross the legs for this, but it will take you a little deeper. So if you spread out your arms, you can determine, do I want to keep my feet on the floor and unstacked and just swish them to the left? Or do I want to cross the right leg over the left and then send them over? with the left foot still on the floor. Now that's gonna isolate the low back more, but if you lift your left foot and then allow the knees to topple over, that's gonna maneuver that stretch of the twist further up the spine. But it may or may not be complementary to um, your experience. So if you need to make it less, keep the legs uncrossed. Close your eyes. 
to three. Inhale, roll out of the twist. If the legs are crossed, uncross. If you want to recross, left leg over the right. You can keep that foot to the floor. Maybe that's better for you. Or maybe it feels better to hover the foot. Draw the knees in towards the chest and then roll. Release negative energy and toxins away from my body. I am being purified with life force energy. Affirming, I release any and all negative energy and toxins. I am purifying with life force energy. Let's unroll from the twist, uncross the legs, and hug them in. We'll do our last little flow. So as you inhale, spread out your arms, fly the feet up. Exhale, separate the legs wide, konasana. Inhale, feet return, waterfall, and exhale when release. Inhale, waterfall, simple variation. Exhale, widen the gap between your legs. Inhale, zip the two together. Exhale, hug the knees in. Last one. Inhale, arms out, feet over the body. Exhale, separate the legs. Inhale, bring them back together. And exhale, curl in. All right. At this point, Go ahead and roll over to one side of your body. And I want you to do a restorative pose today. So if you have furniture and you want to sit legs up, you can. If you have blocks in a bolster, you can create a slide. Or maybe you want to keep it simple, bolster under the knees. Once you figure out how you want to rest, cater to your body's needs. Make sure you're warm enough. Close your eyes.
try to look at Shavasana as being meaningful time, a time to continue to practice self-control, self-mastery, self-realization. So to practice self-mastery, self-control, self-realization, it usually requires discipline, devotion, concentrated effort. You're going to find something to put all your attention on. It could be just somewhere in your body. It could be your right leg or a big toe. It could even be your tongue. And then if that's what you want to focus on, when the mind begins to scramble or roam, you bring it back to that body part. And you can also bear witness to the breath. You can even use a word or mantra or affirmation to recite over and over again in the mind because the recitation, the repetition, prevents the mind from roaming beyond that. So let's try to minimize our thoughts for the next few minutes together.
to add some contemplative time. Let's walk the feet on top. Well, you may not have the bolster underneath your knees. If you do, your feet can land on top. If not, just bend your knees. If you're flat on your back, just notice how that changes up your pelvis. Just let the knees rock gently side to side. And then if you're flat on your back, Hug them back in. Roll to one side of your body. We're going to end our practice with just a couple minutes of seated silent meditation. So once you get settled, and if you're at home, you can sit in a chair. You don't feel like you have to stay on the floor. And we'll close the eyes. Seven more breaths. and gather our hands to prayer. Oh, oh. 
Light within me honors and bows respectfully to the same light within each of you. Namaste.